Jean Patrick Grumberg, behind us is the CBS Television Center where the Bill Maher show is being taped right now. This Bill Maher late night on HBO, it's a culture setting, uh, popular entertainment show. We have entertainment shows late night on all the network channels that are all bashing conservatism, republicanism. Of course. Of course. And at the same time, they encourage people to resist to it. They encourage people to, to wake up, to understand that they are not the bad guys, the others are. Yeah. Yes. Because, you know, nobody likes to be bullied and they are bullying people all the time. In the name of uh, fighting hatred, they hate more and people feel it. They just don't have the, the, the voice, the media to express it, but believe me, they feel it. You mean the public does? Yeah, the public does. And the public doesn't have a voice to express his opinion. So people don't know about it. And they have the audience, they have the media, they have the, 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 the big voice to make believe that they, they are bigger than they really are. You know? Well, but aren't they setting the uh, public sentiment rather than uh, just, just their own? Well, if they were, they would not. Uh, they would not uh, be able to. They would not be able to, to 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 help the situation with Trump, for instance. They couldn't prevent Trump from being elected in Europe. They couldn't prevent the conservative and the populist to be elected. They couldn't prevent Brexit. So they are losing on every front, and it looks like they are going to lose again. You know, so uh, a friend of mine who's a Democrat, and I learned a lot from Democrat, told me that Trump is destroying everything they built. And I said, yes, you're right. In a good way. I didn't say that. Uh -huh. I said, yes, you're right. You know, the way I see it, like a bonsai. You see how bonsai work? Bonsai is wonderful. You cut tiny pieces, you sculpture, you work on it for 30 years and then it shaped itself. So the liberal shaped a new society for 40 years, tiny pieces by tiny pieces, with, 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 with time, they gave themselves, they were proud of their work. And then Trump arrived and he said, oh, this, this bonsai is ugly, oh, let's cut it. It destroyed the fake new culture that they want to create for a better man. Like the communists, like Mao Zedong, the communist revolution, wanted to create a new man. They want to create a new man, a new society that is totally counter human nature. And people resist to that. They don't know it because they don't listen, they cannot listen because the other side, the big side, what's in between California and, and New York and New Jersey, the whole population doesn't like it. The independent don't, don't like it. The, the normal Democrat like, like, like our parents 30, 40 years ago don't like it. They just don't know it. Is this similar in Western Europe, in France, for example, where you come from? No, it's much worse. It's much worse for several reasons. First, in Europe, in France, you don't have Fox News. You don't have the media, the conservative media. At all? None. Radio? Zero. Why? Oh, that's a good question. Um, By government edict? No, it's... Uh, you know, it's a cronies, crony capitalism. The government controls too much and they give uh, big contracts to big companies they're friend, they befriend with. So the big companies they befriend with own the media and they have to be quiet on it and never contradict the media, the government. Even anticipating what government think, what government want, and doing exactly what they want. So it's much worse. And it doesn't look to me that the population is, is a, has a strong reaction because they, they get lost over time. 
you know here people have roots people believe in their judeo-christian roots over there in europe they lost it they don't know their roots anymore so they're in in limbo they're in between things they don't know what happened to them much is it possible that what occurred in europe the bias that you see in the news for instance it's anti-american in general anti-israel and very uh, philo or philo islam they're not criticizing uh, islamic imperialism do you see that migrating here like fashions from france well i see it migrating but not from france not as a fashion from france i see it migrating inside the democratic party i see it migrating within the left what we call islamo lefties it's happening here in university and who are the people who who study in university the elite of tomorrow the people who are going to lead the country tomorrow so some of them are going to go back to being normal you know they, there is a saying if you're not communist at the age of 20 it's because you don't have a heart if you're communist at the age of 40 it's because you don't have a head or a brain so some of the youth that you see in university today being far left some of them are going to come back to their senses of course but not all of them and i basically see united states with the you know with the with the yeah pendulum it's going far there and and going back and back and forth so i'm not pessimistic but it's a danger it's there but still 80% 80% of the population is anti palestinian here that's a lot in america yeah when in in europe it's like between 15 and 30% are pro israelis that's small yeah that's small yeah. because there is which continent is the most anti-semitic in the world europe you mean outside the middle east yeah of yeah. course yeah. and which continent is the most pro jews here america 70% of the american people like israel they like jews now not in europe so it's a different situation it's getting momentum here it's growing but maybe i'm too optimistic but i don't worry much you relocated from europe to israel you mentioned anti-semitic attitudes there but that's also growing in the democratic party here yeah i relocated from from france uh, and i live between los angeles and tel aviv and i share my time between the two and by the way um, uh, i find it funny because you find me everywhere i am last time you found me in tel aviv when i was in tel aviv now you find me in Los Angeles when I'm in Los Angeles. I don't know how you do it, but congratulations. Well, it's because you come here, you find an oasis, I guess. And of course Israel is an oasis and and for the time being the United States is is an oasis. Uh, do you yeah, connect maybe. on your flights to to uh, to, uh, to and fro? Do you stop in France and visit? Never. Why not? It's boring. It's it's a lost country. It's not worth it when you when you land i had didn't happen to me for at least six or seven years when you land in in paris airport it's like a third third world airport when you land to zurich which is much smaller it's wonderful you go to israel london is not a bigger city than paris you know? heathrow you mean uh, london heathrow london israel yeah. it's amazing 80 million tourists goes visit france every year and their airport is a junkyard it's horrible it's closed at 9 p.m but are you angry at what the politicians have let happen to the culture no i'm not angry at all because i believe in free will what happened to france is what the french people wanted they have the free will they have the vote they have the, their brand their decision their thinking this is what they wanted i respect that they gave up on themselves i respect that they gave up on their culture they decided to accept like 
five or seven or ten or fifteen million uh, Muslim from migrants from uh, Arabic and African country. I, we don't know exact number. Well, I respect that. They decided to kill their culture. I respect that. It's amazing that they did that. But it's your culture too. Surely you must resent that. No, it's not really my culture because my my parents are from on one side from Romania and from the other side are from Russia and Poland. Poland. So I was born in France, but it's not it's never been my culture much when I was when I was like 15 years old and I looked around me for the first time I saw something that was not matching my culture it was different I didn't find any common ground much besides the language and the culture I learned I didn't see the thinking the same way of thinking so unfortunately it's not my culture but I want to tell you an anecdote about that and I shouldn't tell you this is the most politically incorrect thing. This is the taboo. 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when the Israelis saw the French Jews coming in drove, coming in number for vacation, they had a high opinion about them. They, had, they, they thought the French were cultural, the French were Voltaire, they were coming, they thought the French were coming on vacation with a pile of books under their, their arm, you know. And what do they see? They see mainly French North African Jews. From Tunisia, Algeria? Come Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, coming to vacation. And what do they do? They don't have the books with them. They have the, they have the bath suit. They go to the beach. They sit on the beach. They lay on the beach for six hours under the sun when where is in Israel people are teaching their children don't don't go under the sun because it's not healthy it's not good for the skin you can catch you can catch cancer skin cancer people hide from the beach hide from the sun and what do they see they see North African Jews coming and going straight to the beach that was such a huge disappointment to the Israelis? To the Israelis, who had high opinion of the, of, of the French people, of the French Jews. Yeah. So now they are relent, relenting them for, for the way they, they, they live their tourist life. So have nothing in common with that culture. Because they're Sephardim. I mean, Sephardic Jews. They are French Jews. Of, of North African Arab oh, cultures. Yeah. yeah. They come from Arab countries. They come from Arab countries with their culture, with their, which I respect. Yeah. And the uh, Israeli don't like it. I have nothing against it. I, I'm not saying I don't like it. Actually, I like it. I like the, the North African Jews' uh, behavior, cultural. It's colorful. It's high level. I love it. Uh -huh. It's not mine at all. So about immigration, you're saying that this immigration changed Europe. The North African, the Muslim countries, Turkish, Moroccan, has changed Europe. And, it changed, and it changed California, and it changed the United States. You mean the, the Hispanic immigration? Yeah, absolutely. They, of course they change it. They bring, they bring their culture with them. You know, when I, uh, when I uh, made Aliyah to Israel, I had the meeting, we all have to have a meeting with the, with the Jewish agency. And why did the guy told us? He said, you are going to change the culture of Israel. You are bringing with you your culture, which is going to enrich, to change the culture of Israel. To improve it. To change it. I don't remember if he said improve or not. This is a value level. I'm not talking about value. I said changing. So if, if a few thousand of Jews change the culture of Israel, what about millions of migrants from Hispanic country here and millions of migrants from Muslim countries there? Of course it changes a lot. And the, the more the leftist media denies it, the more it shows that it changed.
We also have uh, Muslim immigrants here, many from Somalia and Syria. And you, do. you do. But so far, it seems to me that you have, you're lucky here, we're lucky here, that there is a difference. You have a certain number, I don't know how many. I didn't find study, I didn't look for a study, but there are studies. Uh, uh, quite a large number of Muslims come to America and embrace the American dream, embrace democracy, wants to live their American life. They love it. You don't have that in Europe. In Europe, they hate it. They hate the country they come to. So it's a different concept. Well, but aren't they, many of them are living on uh, social welfare benefits? Yeah, well, you know what? People don't respect the, the government, the administration, the organization they get, they get money from. When you, when you receive money from someone, you don't, it doesn't bring respect. You know, respect is when you treat people your equal equal to you. When you give money to someone, you don't treat them that equal. You don't tell them, work, you're equal to me, you can make it, you can make a living. No, they say, you are inferior to me. You're not good. You're not able to, 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 to make a living. So we are going to give you money. We're going to help you because we believe you are inferior to us. This is horrible. This is racism. Nobody says that. But this is what it is. And, and, and respect, respect would be to, to say, we are equal, we can make it. And it's not what happened. You know, there are different levels of racism. There is the racism you talk about and the racism you don't talk about. That, that's the situation, basically, in my opinion. Uh, what do you see now with the uh, EU siding with Iran to uh, uh, avoid and evade sanctions from the Trump administration on Iran? Uh, that the, uh, that they'll, they'll keep this Islamist regime in power and it, they have an alliance with the left, Islamists and the left in both Europe and North America. Well, you know, you know the song, money, 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 money. They want to sell. Europe, European country, European company, they want to sell their product to Iran. That's it. Basically, that's it. Now, on the political side, the European, they always make the wrong choices. They're always on the wrong side of the history. So why wouldn't they continue? You know, they have the, the, they have communists as leaders of Europe. What can you expect from a communist? Juncker is a communist. Juncker is a communist. Why the communist? A Trotskyist. This is the worst ideology on earth. So you mentioned communism, socialism, and now this notion of socialism as uh, an ideal is being held up by the Democrats in the United States. What do you think about this? Well, never say, never let reality being uh, uh, in, in the way of a good interfere with a good lie never so this is where they are but why do they are there because they were in the universities where the teachers are marxists should i wait a second for the this is censorship what about my freedom of speech there's a hospital, a big hospital nearby. Oh, that was a hospital? Okay, I thought you would. I, I didn't turn my head. I thought you would. <laughs> Ambulance, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, university? university, 30, 40 years ago, the teachers, they were Marxists. They are Marxists. What did they, what did they teach the elite of today? Socialism. They didn't teach them the good thing of capitalism. They taught them the bad thing of capitalism. There are bad things everywhere. They didn't talk about the good thing. They didn't balance their education. So what do they want? What do you want from them? They have the, the, the you know, the seed is bad. That's, that's here. Does this concern you that the uh, Democrats are embracing a, a, a leftist uh, socialist agenda? No, I like it. Why? Look how they're gonna lose the election. 
I like it. The more left they go, the more down they go. But it also changes society as what's acceptable and, and ideal in society, that socialism used to be anathema, and now suddenly... Yeah, you're right. You're right. They are pushing an agenda that is so far left to, to soften the skin of the normal people, to make them compromise and accept non-acceptable things that are... It's, it's better accept something halfway than the world. So they are working on that. And you're right, it's, culturally it's working. But for how long? You know, I have the, I have the feeling that the 21st century will not be the century of socialism. I think the 21st century will see the de a strong decline in socialism because it goes too far and uh, people reject it. Like, can you think of so many politically correct, stupid things they have? People are tired of that. You know, calling racist everyone doesn't work anymore. anymore. People don't buy it anymore. No, but the idea of uh, giving away money, that they're saying uh, giving away college loans, forgiving you, repayment of the loans, uh, reparations to blacks for, uh, for the Civil majority War. Of pe majority of people are against that. If you, if you read the, the poll, that's an indication of what people think. People are against that. They don't like it. You know, they say, they say we want uh, free Medicaid, free Medicare. But when they say, are you willing to pay for that? Are you willing to give up on your own insurance? No, no, I don't. So, no, this is a question they don't often ask. So that's how it goes. Yes, I'm, I'm for big, beautiful, humanistic idea. But if I have to pay for that and give up on, on things I believe are right for that, no. Am I going to pay for other people when I cannot pay for my own children? doesn't work. Uh -huh. But the Europeans have had this tax. People f in the United States are not considering what the social pro uh, pr programs cost in terms of tax on the middle class for the United States. Do you suppose that uh, the European experience will, r will come here? No, it won't. It won't. I believe that the American people have better common sense. I told you earlier, they have strong Judeo-Christian roots. They have strong, they believe in capitalism. They know that the capitalists can go too far and can, and can do bad things. But they still believe in capitalism. They still believe that the best comes out of capitalism. Who, who fought, who, who, who fought the, the hunger in the world? Capitalism, not socialism. People know that. Yeah, yeah. But, but the public, they're, they're looking at uh, free health care public yeah. health care like Europe and thinking well if we go for that that's great it saves us lots of money and everyone's uh, everyone's included you have that in France yeah you have that in France but in France people are poor in France people make uh, the average salary in French it's less than two thousand dollars a month in France people pay like 70 percent of their salary goes to the state. What percent? 70, seven zero. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. When, when as a businessman, I used to be a businessman in France. When I give you a check for $1,500, uh -huh. $1,500, it costs me another $2,000. So the total is $3,500, which is why I Instead of giving it to you and you can get a cheaper insurance everywhere, anywhere you want. No, you are forced to take the state insurance, one payer insurance, that decide for you, that just decided that a, a whole homeopathy uh, 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 medication is outside of the reach. Now you have to pay for it. They just change their rule because they get, they get poorer and poorer and poorer and they, get, and they take more money on people. But the, the media won't tell you. But I believe the American people have common sense and they know it. Even if they don't know the detail, they feel that you cannot give it for free. 
it has to come from someone's pocket and they know it's going to come out of their pocket. Do they? Or are they thinking, well, it just comes from the government and the government prints money? You believe that? You believe that people think that? I don't believe it. It's because the media don't give a voice to the majority, to the hundreds of millions who don't believe it, that people think uh, they accept it. They do not. I don't believe they do it. And you know what? One person in America has proven that he understands the American mentality better than anyone else. Which person? President Trump. And what did he do? He lowered tax. Result is people have more money in the pocket. People, the employment is very low. Economy is very low. And people know it. Which is why the left don't fight on, this, on, on the economy on, on the situation of the country. They tried to, they tried to fight on the Russian hoax. It didn't work. They tried to force him to show his tax. It didn't work. They tried to work on misogyny and him rating, raping women. It didn't work. Now they are on races and it won't work either. They tried to picture him, to show him as a racist. It doesn't work. They're desperate. Why does the European media, and, and I say uh, Reuters, which is uh, headquartered in Western Europe, Associated Press, uh, much of the, the business day of what we see here is shaped there. Why are they so against this administration? Uh, because it's very, it represents America. It represents a proud America. And they hate America. There is an anti-Americanism over there, everywhere. So when America is weak, with a weak president who goes, who goes, who, 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 who lead from, I don't like the expression lead from behind, because he did, he was, Obama was not leading from behind. He was not leading at all. He was behind. So when America is not ahead of the, of the, of the pack, when America decided to let the UN make decision, they like it. America is weak. We accept a weak America. It's not threatening. But when America is proud, when America is strong, when America leads the world as it should do, they hate it again. Why? This is why they hate the, the Trump administration. It's winning. They hate Trump who told them, hey, you have, you pay, you have to pay your fair share of NATO, we are defending you, and you don't even pay to defend your own children. They don't like to hear that. Because they're spending so much of that money, of the, the savings on social welfare. Exactly. On social welfare and on stupid things. They give money to Africa, they give money to Palestinians. For what? For nothing. For terrorism, for corruption. To Iran. For nothing. No good reason. They are always on the wrong side of the history. You know, I was reading this afternoon about uh, Cinco de Mayo. I forgot that Cinco de Mayo is celebrated here yeah. as the day of, uh, uh, of Mexico. It's not. Uh, it's not the Independence Day, is it's it? It's not. It's the day the Mexican won a war against the French in 1862. From 1860, the French kept losing war. And the French at that time were the strongest army in the world. The French was the star of the nation. Of the world. Of the world. Yeah. And now they are down the drain. And Germany is going down the drain. And many countries in Europe. And Britain is coming back. But I think they made a huge mistake. They accepted too many too many uh, uh, Muslim from uh, from uh, uh, um, Syria, sorry, Turkey, Morocco. No, no, from uh, Pakistan. Free. Pakistan and everything. Yeah. So they made a big, huge mistake, and they, it seems that it changed the society now. Not a very good thing. But they have a good they have a good prime minister now. Loves Israel. If if someone loves Israel. It means he's a good person, and it means he's a good politician. It's like a litmus test. If you're anti-Israel, you cannot be good. 
something is 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 weird in your mind. Something is 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 wicked with you. Wicked. Wicked. Yeah. yeah. You cannot be pro Palestinian and have a straight mind and straight thought. It's not possible. It doesn't work together. It's simple. You're saying that uh, the Jewish state is the litmus test? Yeah. It, Absolutely, no question. Because it's a democracy, it creates, it helps Palestinians, it's a beautiful country, people are happy. If you are anti all this, something is wrong with you. And if you're a politician, it's even worse. Because politicians should know better. So they have no excuse. None. Why is Trump, President Trump, still so popular in the state of Israel? Well, uh, the Israelis have a good common sense. The media are on the left, like everywhere else. The, med the Israeli media, you mean? Yeah. They are on the left, like everywhere else. And the Israeli people vote on the right, voted on the right for the last more than 20 years. Which means the media fight and work and, and try to brainwash people like they do here and in Europe. And they fail because the Israeli people have a very, very strong common sense, strong value and offer and also very, very deep roots. Roots is everything. Here people have roots. In Israel they have even deeper roots in their, in their Judean and, and Jewish tradition, values. And that is against the left, because the left values are again Jewish values, in every sense. Against? Of course. They are opposite, they are contradict Jewish values. Globalism? Globalism, changing human nature, go, giving up on capitalism, giving up on free will, giving up on free enterprise, having a government decide for you, giving up on your free will in the name of a, of a bigger government. This is the opposite of the Jewish nature. Jewish is a creator, is a builder, entrepreneur. And the left is against that. What, what the b basic concept of left is what? Is a big government make decisions for you. You give up on your free will, you give up on your freedom, on a, a part of your freedom in the name in the, in the hand of the government. That's the left concept versus the, what you call right or conservative. It's we give, we leave, we leave to the people what belongs to them. That's basically the difference. And this is where the Jewish tradition is. Are you concerned about this coming election in 2020, November? Are you concerned about the, the fate of the world? Yeah, I'm concerned because I have many Democrat friends and they're going to feel very sad. And I love them. I love my friend and they're going to be very sad. I'm not good at predicting election, but I listen to my friend and they are... This almost always speak like it's lost. This cycle is lost for them. The 24 or 25 candidates one is worse than the other. They, 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 they do all the mistakes. They, you know, all the boxes, the wrong boxes. They, they and uh, you know, it's a difficult situation for Trump because you suppose you always when when the opponent is sliding, you're always supposed to let it slide further, never prevent him from from going deep down. But on the other hand, you have to show the word, you have to show the people, the American people, that, that you have to point out where they fail. So it's a, it's a narrow line between letting them slide and showing where they slide. But they are sliding, definitely sliding down, going down the drain. Cultural leaders like the mainstream networks from morning until late night are trying to intimidate people into not breaking from the Democrat uh, uh, drumbeat, yeah. not breaking from the from the party line, and uh, especially people who are concerned about the future. Should they f 
be intimidated and shamed into being socially acceptable when this election comes around? I don't understand the question, should they be? They should be what they are. They should be what they feel. But I believe that their, their feeling is in the polls. They don't tell what they think to the pollers. They feel we like, we like Trump, we're not going to say it. Last time, Hillary Clinton, a few days before the election, they said she had 80% chances of being elected. Why? Because nobody would, people admit they were intimidated to talk, not to, not to cast their vote. Because you cast their vote with a, with a curtain around you, you know? So, I believe it's not black and white, or white. Some are intimidated, some are feeling stronger because of intimidation, that's a reaction. Human nature, people don't like to be pushed. So some are retracting, of course, are scared, and some shut their mouths and say, you're gonna see, it's gonna be payback on, on election day. People don't like to be pushed, don't like to be bullied. So you believe that the, the CBS and the late shows and, and, uh, and, the, and the Camel and the, and the Maher and the <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel and the Camel and the Schmackel, you think that they, 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 they scare people? I'm not that sure. I'm not that sure. We don't know exactly. Well, experienced people such as yourself, but how about young people who don't know any different and want to be uh, in the vogue with the, the fashion? Well, uh, I don't know exactly about young people. There might be more mm, vulnerable, more malleable to this type of ideas, especially since, as I said before, when you're 20, if you're not communist, you're a moron. You have no brain, you're stupid, you have no heart. Ideal, know. Idealistic. Yeah, idealistic, which is normal. Uh -huh. But you know, by, by 40? By 40, if you're still there, it's because you have no brain. Because you don't understand com uh, uh, because you didn't, human nature. Because you did, not, you did not criticize what you learned. If you cannot criticize, if you cannot analyze what you learn, then something is, is missing in you. Because the failures in communism are that in human nature and uh, and dictatorship. Well, you want to go. You want to look at Venezuela. You want to look at Cuba. You you want to look at China, China, North Korea, Europe. Europe is do going down. You know they say they take uh, they take Northern Europe as example. They don't tell people. They don't remind people that Prime Minister of, De of, of uh, uh, Danish, Denmark, Denmark, came to came to the States, and he publicly said, "I want to correct before the last election. I want to correct a mistake. We are not a socialist country. We are not. We are a capitalistic country with social." social rule with a, 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 a grain of social welfare of social rule in a capitalistic country with capitalistic strong strength that allow us to do it he reminded it to people that capitalism is the only way to go well this is the only way to go because socialism is going after other people money but at a certain point, point you, run you, you, run, you, you, run you run out of other people's money. That's a problem. Thank you so much for speaking with us today, sharing your ideas from Tel Aviv, Los Angeles, and flying over uh, Orly and Charles de Gaulle. Uh, will you be going home through, through Zurich? Uh, I would go through London, London Heathrow, all the time, always. I'm sorry, I, I avoid, 
I avoid what Paris has become. And you know, my friend in Paris told me, don't come, don't come. You're going to be frustrated. 